pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Public comment and announcement? Hi, I have one. I'm Jenny Hewitt from Brooks Free Library. Actually, I have a couple announcements, but one major one is that the CLAMS Consortium is moving to a new integrated library system at the end of February. So what that means is we'll be working with a new circulation and cataloging system, and the public will see a brand new catalog. Um, we're excited about it, and there's a lot of great features, so more information on that to come. What I'm coming tonight to let you know is that in preparation for this, the library will will be closed next Wednesday, February 8th, for staff training. And um, we've been fine free for a few years now, so people don't have to worry if their books are overdue. They can drop them in the book drop, and we'll check them in the next day. Um, another announcement related to that is that due to this migration to the new system, the borrowing of books from outside of CLAMS, that's through the Commonwealth Catalog, which is really popular, and interlibrary loan um, will be suspended for a month beginning Wednesday. Kind of short notice on that. We just got that today as well. Um, so those services will resume in another month and people will be able to place their requests again then once the new system is live. Um, so the timeline for this is they're going to start migrating our patron and bibliographic, that's the books and all the materials, those databases on Friday, February 24th, and that process will continue over the weekend. Uh, while this is occurring, we'll be using an offline circulation module on Friday and Saturday, and that means it's limited functionality on that. It's not connected to the real database. Um, so pa we can check out items for patrons, but they'll have to have their library card with them. So if anyone has misplaced their card, can't find it, now's the time to come in and pick up a new card. There's no charge for that. It's a very quick process. We just scan a new barcode into your record and you're on your way. Um, so full services, you know, will come back when the system goes live. But those few days, we won't be able to place holds or, um, or fill holds for patrons to pull items off of our shelves to fill holds. So just a few days of inconvenience, and then we'll have a new system. Uh, so again, more details will follow on the, on the various um, improvements that will be in place. Uh, we think, we think um, People will really like it. One of our staff members was on the committee that really looked at the available options for the whole CLAMS consortium, you know, Cape Wide. And um, it's, it's a, instead of being with a proprietary vendor, this is a Koha open source system. And the vendor that, you know, there is a vendor who tailors it for you. Um, they're much more responsive to needs, which um, has not been the case with the big proprietary systems. Um, we're a consortium, and most of the country has county systems, um, you know, one administration, and not the independent libraries. And so, uh, so that affects, you know, the rules and how the the way the system works. And so, we think this is going to be a big improvement for everyone, and we won't wait so long when we need something to be fixed. Um, and then, since I'm here, I thought I would mention February Vacation Week programs coming up. Um, this year, we're happy to have back the Family Sheet Fortnight. So people can come, families can come to the library at 5.30 on Friday, February 17th, and we'll have pizza, and then they'll build their sheet forts around the library and read a book or play a board game um, by flashlight in their little tents. So we do require registration for that since, uh, you know, um, it's pizza and we need to know how many are coming. Um, and we're asking if people to bring their own sheets or flashlights if possible, but we will have some there. Um, we have cookie decorating on Tuesday, February 21st at 2.30. Um, there's a kid's art day all day on February 22nd. That's Wednesday. That's all day, 10 to 7. Uh, the general theme is paper bag puppets, but we'll have a variety of art supplies available, so the kids are free to do whatever they'd want. Um, on um, Thursday at 2.30, we have an interactive movie once a month. So this month it's The Lion King, so the kids shout and sing along and a variety of props are provided so they can interact with the movie and, and that's always a good time. On Friday, um, we'll have Lego Day all day and people, families can come by anytime. 
between 10 and 7, uh, 10 and 4, because it's Friday, and um, join in the fun. And finally, we end on um, Saturday the 25th with a magic show with Ed Popolosic. He's always a really popular magician. And that, all the programs are free, but this one is a uh, first come, first serve basis. We'll be giving out tickets starting at 2, and that's just because of the capacity of the room um, caps at 90 people. So that's February vacation. Thank you. Thank you, Jenny. Good evening, Cindy Williams, Executive Director of the Harwich Chamber. Mr. Waystack has asked me to make the announcement this week since he did last week, but we're very excited to be a part of this Wednesday's housing huddle, having it at the 204 upstairs in the library from 8.30 to 10. And this is um, to share with all of uh, the community also how the housing crisis is impacting our businesses. So we have a panel of business leaders, the fire chief, um, the CEO of Outer Cape Health, as well as the town administrator. And the uh, director of communications, Matt Pitt, will be our MC. And uh, also the guest speaker will be um, Alyssa, the CEO of Housing Alliance. So we hope everyone will join us on Wednesday from 8.30 to 10. Thank you, Cindy. Hi, Carolyn Carey, Community Center Director. And I'm just going to go through a few programs that we have coming up. On February 1st through the 7th, we have Decorated Duck. You can come by the community center, pick up your duck, you take it home with you, and you return it on February 18th. And then the week of school vacation, we have what we call Ducks on Display. They'll be throughout the building. We invite the public to come in and vote. Um, and we are going to do most creative, Best Harwich Community Center Duck, and Best Overall. Those are all free prizes will be given out. So that's Come Decorate a Duck with us. Then we have on February 15th at 5.30, the second in our series of um, bicycle information session. This one is about maintenance, um, tire pressures, removing a wheel, uh, fixing a flat. So. Uh, another just free po program, and it's for all ages. Um, and we've had quite a turnout at all those events, so people are really looking for information on getting back out, although the weather's beautiful today. Uh, then, much like the library, we have quite a few events during the school vacation week. We have a mad science program on February 21st at 2 o'clock, um, and there you don't have to pre-register, but space is limited. We can only fit 90 in our room as well. February 21st. And then on February 22nd, the much-awaited Find a Duck is back. <laughs> there will be 10 <coughs> ducks hidden around the building and outside the grounds, starting at 9 a.m. No early arrivals. None of you out there checking early. Uh, prizes will be given. We'll have the master sheet of ducks located at the front desk. When one is found, we'll cross it off. Uh, but we're excited about the duck event. The kids have been all searching already. They're not out there yet, but they're having fun. <laughs> um, and then during that week, we have our first ever indoor yard sale, February 23rd, from 10 to 4. Um, so we have quite a few vendors who have already signed up, but make sure you come by and check that out. You don't want to miss it. Um, and then we are back to our regular programming of Grab a Tea With Me. And I know I mentioned this one is an important one because we're talking about fees and um, we're talking about time use at the community center before the facility committee presents to you. Um, so we want the public to be able to weigh in on that. So I think that's everything, but gee, thanks for listening. Do we have a choice? <laughs> no. Mary, go ahead. Okay, just to mix it up, I'm going to start at the bottom of the list of vacancies this week. We have openings on zoning, youth services, voter information, treasure chest, real estate and open space, planning board, housing committee, historic district, energy and climate, cultural council, forest, conservation, community center facilities, capital outlay, and agriculture. Anyone else for public comment and announcement? 
<laughs> presentation. Joe, do you want to open this? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening to you, to members of the board, uh, to everyone assembled here today and those that may be watching on television. Um, in a moment, uh, we're going to hear from our Director of Cultural Affairs, Kara Mawinney, the Chair of the um, Local Cultural Council, Bernadette Waystack, and our Executive Director for the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, these three folks um, represent so many folks that have done some great work, and that great work has come to fruition. Kara and I sat in on a virtual meeting uh, this past Thursday, January 26th, where the Mass Cultural Council voted unanimously, 10-0 to um, recognize not one, but uh, both cultural districts. So we now have the 52nd cultural district designations in the Commonwealth, if I get that right. 53rd. And, and 53rd, thank you. Um, which are the Harwich Center Cultural District and the Harwich Port Cultural District. So with that, Mr. Chairman, through you, I'd like to turn it over to our director and the folks I just mentioned for a presentation. Good evening, Cara Mawinney, Director of Cultural Affairs. Last Thursday was a very historical moment for the town of Harwich, not only receiving one, but as Joe said, two cultural districts. Very long way to getting to this point. So as you know, back in 2018, it started with the Cultural Compact signing, in which we have some many thanks to have out there, which is first and foremost our former town planner, Charlene, and our former chair of the Cultural Council, Tina, whom without those efforts, we wouldn't be where we are today. A special thanks to Cindy Williams, for <laughs> the executive director of the chambers, we all know, for her persistence in keeping the idea alive, but also her tenacity with it does not go unnoticed. <laughs> I'd also like to thank our current chair of Cultural Council, Bernadette Waystack, whom provided much valuable insight as the culture here for the culture here in Harwich. But then, first and foremost, we have a few artists here with me today. I want to thank all of our 204 artists and the artists within the town who not only helped me once, but multiple occasions host the MCC and show them what Harwich is really about. And that was a pivotal moment for us in town. Last but certainly not least, I would like to thank you, the board. Without your continued support and dedication to the arts and culture, we wouldn't have this designation today. So thank you for that. But to kick things off for the Cultural District, we'll be setting up some times with Town Administration and with Mass Cultural Council, where we will work with ribbon cuttings and sign unveilings in the town. And we will also start with our first community art show, which is going to be titled Kaleidoscope. It's going to be derived from the Greek word meaning beauty and shape. And it is a presence to show the beauty of Harwich and the shape of which all seven villages encompass the arts and culture. That is to follow by Art Week, which is going to be rising spirits essentially so if you look I, you have something up at your and this is going to be our theme so soaring to new heights because harwich is soaring to new heights for art week so we are going to be rising up together and we are going to be showing our creative spirit in town and we're going to have all activities we've started working with volunteers and groups and so we are going to be hosting a wide variety of programs and activities throughout the entire week to showcase Harwich and what it is. Our Mass Cultural Council partners will be invited down as well as several state representatives will be all invited to join in on any of these occasions throughout our celebrations. We'll also work with the Chamber, our Cultural Council, to get the word out, to spread the word via social media of everything that's happening. And ladies, would you like to say anything? <laughs> <laughs> Since I didn't know I was speaking tonight, <laughs> other than announcing our housing huddle, um, as Kara said, it was a long ride here. I'm looking at the selectmen and I'm trying to remember the picture. I think three of you may have been at that signing. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you which three because I can't remember all. No, I can't. But what we went through to get here was just an amazing feat and um to be able to have two is unheard of they don't do it um as many of you that were here will remember um, we were pretty adamant because um as i beat into all of your heads and our community we have seven villages and we want to really always share the love and what we all have so to have two is just amazing i'm super excited to be here with kara and uh, bernadette and since I can't remember what else I would have said, um, I'm just going to leave it at that. <laughs> uh, good evening. So uh, sports can be considered part of culture. So I'm going to throw a little sports analogy at you because basically it was a marathon, not a sprint. 
<laughs> and um, special thanks to Tina Gaines. I did reach out to her. I know she's going to watch it. She had a work conflict tonight. And Cindy, they started it, as you know, with the, the cultural compact signing, that pilot program that the MCC did. I just walked in in the middle of it. And Cindy and they handed the baton to me. I had big shoes to fill um, with Tina when I took over for her. She made it easy. And then I just passed it off to the anchor, and here we are. Um, but speaking on behalf of the Cultural Council, um, our job is an, we're an LCC, and we give out the grant money every year. And we're always looking for new and better ways to get the word out for that to everyone and to um, you know, get as many people involved in projects, events, and um, things that come out of that. So I'm looking very much forward to talking to Kara about the best way that we'll be able to collaborate with her and cultural affairs, with the two cultural districts, and all of the seven villages of Harwich going forward. So thanks. And you thought I wasn't done. <laughs> Actually, I did remember something that I would be very remiss in not mentioning. Um, Carolyn Carey. Oh. So when we first started, Carolyn was given the task to do something with a building. So <laughs> Carolyn laid the foundation, and we all just kind of jumped in and helped make it. So Carolyn, thank you, thank you, thank you. And one last kickoff event, and then I'll present the, the, the banner I got sent today, which is we are partnering with the Community Development Partnership in order to provide our first workshop to help creatives and artists in town with networking, business practices, and pretty much any resources that they can do. There is a registration fee for it. It's going to run for two days. The reason we're asking for people to pay for it is because we're going to feed them, which is always a key component when you're having a workshop. But it is um, the art of doing a business as a creative, and it'll run on March 14th and March 21st. And it covers everything from basic intro to business practices, social media, branding, and it really is to start providing that networking and collaboration and building a community of artists and creatives in town. So we do have that. And then officially, from hot off the press from Mass Cultural Council, we have our Harwich Center Cultural District sign and our Harwich Port Cultural District sign. So these are the press release that they've been sending out that they've been putting pretty much everywhere because they just got an update today that it went out to like 10 more publications. So Harwich is hot and happening in the news. And we are officially a cultural district. Great news for the entire town. Larry, any comments? No, just congratulations. Don? I don't want to get greedy, but uh, <laughs> let's t taking away Pleasant Lake, where, uh, is there any chance of the other four uh, getting uh, <laughs> districts? <laughs> no, it's great work, terrific work. Mary? Yes, just congratulations. It's so inspiring. And years ago, there was something through the chamber that art is what brings a lot of people to the Cape. So what better way to promote it than what you've done? Thank you. No, I would just repeat the same thing. I mean, amazing work and great to have two districts. And thank you again to Carolyn, who really got us all up and running. So thanks. Joe? Just to thank the team um, from day one um, and to build on the sports analogies that you have. You know, uh, every team has a leader, and Coach Carolyn got it started. Um, everyone along the way. Um, just embrace the whole concept and you know hearing the presentation that I'm going from memory so I'm looking at Kara Carolyn Cole did um, as the program officer um, if you ever have a chance to watch that it was as though uh, Carolyn Cole came from us she sounded like the Chamber of Commerce she sounded like Carolyn Carey, Bernadette Wastek, Kara Mawinney, everyone that's ever said um, the value and the beauty of Harwich so being able to sit through that, even though it was virtual, would have been great to be there in person. Um, it was just a, a great moment of pride for me, for our town. So again, congratulations to the team. Wonderful, wonderful accomplishments. And we move forward from there. Thank you, Joe. <coughs> Selectman Howell has asked that we hold the consent agenda until next week. <coughs> Joe, if we could put that back on. One whole item. What's that? One whole, One whole item. item, yeah. Um, there's some edits that we're going to make to that. Like more time to review it. Uh, 
before we get on to new business A, if it's okay with the board, I'd like to bring F up to the top. And uh, with the energy in the room and, and the spirit, I'd like to take on this good news before we do anything else. Mr. Wastak? Oh, what do you mean, F? Uh, approve the following Hall of Fame. New business. Oh, okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, Mr. Powers. I'm ignorant of the process, and I ask tonight as you look at these two nominations for the Harwich Hall of Fame that you don't hold that against the two gentlemen who I think were very well deserving of this nomination. I served with both. Sheldon Thayer, one of the founders of the Harwich Cranberry Harvest Festival, who was a member of the Board of, of Finance for many years, chairman for many of those years, founder of the Barnstable County Finance Committee, he was a guy who, if, if you knew Sheldon, when he got involved in the Harwich Community Center building project, he would update everyone every week on Channel 18, and he had his dog right beside him. Um, he was just so proud of that building and this community. Mr. Culver, who, who was a, I, I had the opportunity to serve with in the Council on Aging, was a detective in this community for many years, and Mr. Galvin pointed out my error in saying that I didn't recognize the length of his career. But I think Carolyn Carey put it best, and I want to read it because it was done so well. Not my words. Okay, well, I'm giving it, I'm attributing it to you. Philippe Culver, wearing a Harwich Police Department badge for nearly 30 years, wasn't the sum of his service to the town. He loved it was just a start, and it was. These numbers just are staggering when I look at it. A gentleman named Lee Culver, 20 years, community center facilities, 30 years, Cape Cod Tech School Committee, 40 years, Howitch Recreation and Youth. And Mrs. Anderson read a list of committees that we need people on today. These two gentlemen epitomized community service in this community. So we know how important community service is being involved, and these two gentlemen are so well deserving. I ask you again, your indulgence, to not hold my ignorance of this process against both of these very well-deserving men. And I know that their partners, their spouses, their families would be very proud to hear their names read at our town meeting this year. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. I would, I would, before I get to comments from the board and a vote, I'd like to publicly apologize to Carol Thayer. In 2019, she sent the board a letter requesting this for a 2019 town meeting. Um, that ended up um, in correspondence, apparently, and it was never acted upon. So she sent the letter that she submitted. I will add that to the packet for town meeting um, and certainly endorse both of these. Um, I would take a motion, and then we can get into discussion. Don? I move that we include with our prior submission the uh, request to uh, have Lee Culver and Sheldon Thayer, Jr. Uh, be honored for, uh, for the Harwich Hall of Fame at this year's town meeting. Second. Okay, moved and seconded. Discussion. Larry. No, very well deserved. Thanks for bringing it forward. Uh, it's, your, it's a no-brainer. Uh, I will say of the two, uh, I probably had more, I'll, I'll classify it as direct conversations with Lee. <laughs> That <laughs> was the other. <laughs> and, uh, but there was no one that did more. Both of them just did more for the town. I look back at the community center and what it looks like now. It was the year I moved here. And I compare that to Chatham and some of our other communities and the design of that, having uh, a youth on one side and Ellis on the other side with a central meeting spot. We're still trying to fulfill that. But just genius in the way it was set up and how they worked and they got the funding for that. So. Um, I'm very supportive. It's great. Thank you, Larry. Don. Mine's a lot shorter. If you think that uh, Junior was a character, yeah. you should have you should have met and talked to a senior. <laughs> Mary. No, I'm in favor of both, and I'm not aware that there's a, a time frame, so I didn't even know you were late. So. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> no, Certainly, I, I. Certainly a, pol uh, a policy we need to address. Uh, Julie. <laughs> No, I, I, again, I'm in favor as well, and, and I did know Lee, and he was a wonderful guy, so thank you for bringing it back up. If I may, Michael, oh, excuse me, Don. Oh, that's fine. I was going to say, that's a good point, because part of, I think, Richard, the issue is is that we, we really don't have a policy, so it's kind of left up in the air of how we proceed when someday when someone comes forward. 
and that we do need to address. Thank you, Don. Yeah, this isn't facetious either. I mean, I wrote uh, Seniors Hall of Fame, and he's on the wall there. Is there any chance of moving them around a little bit so dad and son can be like next to each other? Because I think that's important. Not to Carolyn. No, it's, it's important because it shows generationally how people were involved in Harwich. It's not just one person, the family was involved. I do whatever you want. I'll hide the duck. I'll hide the duck. Can we record that? <laughs> Mr. Chairman, if I can, to uh, Mr. Ballantyne, there is a policy and it should be submitted in November. I was ignorant of the policy and it's totally my fault for the delay in signing it. I, I think your chairman is correct. I think you may want to revisit the time frame of that. People think of it as we get closer to town meeting and Mr. Powers will, I'm sure, let us know very soon how many days we have to town meeting. <laughs> 92. Um, <laughs> 92. But I think it's, it, it could be more timely if it were winter time closer to town meeting than in November. Uh, thanks for that, Richard. My, my uh, comment was not only in the time, but maybe putting some more definition around behind uh, how we uh, support someone or nominate someone. Because as we get more, as we get older in town, we, we're filling up the wall. <laughs> that's a good thing. <laughs> it's a good thing, but we should probably have a trade. Well, that's a bad term. Thank you, Larry. Don, you're all set. I'm all set. All in favor? Aye. 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 Five zero. New business. A, discussion on removing trustees from the Board of Trustees of the Harwich Affordable Housing Trust Fund in accordance with Article 5 of the Declaration of Trust document. Votes may be taken. I'm going to open this with, despite the narrative that's been painted by uh, several people, this is not about retaliation. This is not about bullying. And I'll speak for myself and let the rest of the board members speak for themselves. This is about dysfunction. This is about five years of a trust and not moving the needle forward. And a not a committee, but a trust that cannot seem to get it straight and work together. Um, it's not getting any better. It's only gotten worse. Um, several intelligent people have told me that we should wait and let some time go by and, um, and bring this up later after the trust meeting with the explosion uh, or the explosive trust meeting. Um, I wasn't elected to sit on my hands. I wasn't elected to allow things to continue to go on that are broken. And I've taken the time to speak to a lot of people in town and they think this is broken. Um, Selectman Anderson brought this up. She sat in trust meetings for a very long time. Um, and there's certainly uh, anyone that's willing to go watch the trust meetings and uh, read the minutes of the trust meetings, there is dysfunction. And I think it's incumbent upon this board, at least with three of the members that we, we, we appoint, or four, four people that this board appoints, uh, to change the dynamic of that committee and try and get something done. Uh, housing is one of the topics that has been talked about since I started eight years ago. And that's all we've talked about. It's an emergency. But we're not moving that needle forward. And there, there is absolutely no symmetry on that committee. Um, it's time to rip the Band-Aid off. It's not a pleasant conversation. Other comments have been setting precedent about removing people from committees. This is not a committee. This is a trust. And it's a trust that we trust them with 500000 plus of our money every year to do something for affordable housing. So as emotional as this has gotten, and as many conversations that are, that are taking place on social media, that's where the bullying lies. But I won't be bullied into not having the conversation. It'll be up to this board to see where they want to go with it. Um, Selectman Anderson made a, made a recommendation two weeks ago, and I said I'd bring it back because it was in the Selectman's report, so here we are. The town administrator is not on the trust because of the Board of Selectmen. The town administrator is on the trust because of the trust documents. I have a suggestion, and I will make that suggestion tonight and hear Joe's comments on that, but I believe it's time that we change the trust out almost in its entirety. And I believe the town administrator should look at the or designee clause in those trust documents and possibly appoint a designee, which would allow him to get back to work as the town administrator instead of focusing as much as he is on the housing trust. It's also, I think, incumbent upon this board to bring the trust documents back because I do believe that there's an unfair 
uh, practice here with the, with the town administrator serving on a committee trust with a selectman. And when, when there becomes a riff on that trust and it, and it clearly evolves into the board of selectmen, we're not doing any favors for the taxpayers of this town. And clearly that, that rift between the selectmen on the board and the town administrator has carried over into these meetings and it's time for it to end. Start with comments uh, from Larry. Well, uh, I was actually going to listen to the discussion first because I'm, I haven't made up my mind yet. Uh, I realize the uh, conflict, especially during the last meeting. Uh, I, I guess what I'm struggling with is, is that we're not moving forward and, and there's two sides of that story. I can't figure out why that's not, not happening. You know, uh, one of the points I've tried to make in the past is that we, we've had open discussions without going ahead and asking for our a request for proposal because I think, I don't think open discussions gets us anywhere. We, people need something to react to. And Michael, I'm not sure what's prevented that from moving forward. There's been, uh, and so I don't quite understand that. I do agree with you that, uh, you know, it's an important committee, we need it functional. I also agree with you that uh, it'd be time to re-look really at the trust document. I guess my question is, can we, uh, well, I'll leave it there because there's no reason that uh, designation can't be made to someone else to help to manage that trust. You know, we delegate everything, other, op you know, delegation is a universe we live in. You can do that, but I'd like to hear what other people say yet. I've been trying, I try to come in this with an open mind, and we'll see. Thank you, Larry. Julie? So, I think it was a couple of weeks ago, I, I said how I just can't really understand why we haven't gone forward with an RFP and how important housing is and we continue to talk about it as an emergency and a crisis. So I, I agree with Larry. I, I don't really know why we haven't gone forward with the RFP. And I'm open to making changes if that's what's going to make us make some progress because currently I watched the trust meeting. I, I haven't attended a bunch of trust meetings, but I did watch that trust meeting and it was difficult to watch. It's difficult as a board member. It's difficult to watch as just a dysfunctional, at that point, at that meeting anyway, committee, trust, whatever you want to call them. But um, I think that Mary's suggestion of, you know, two members are up anyway in June. Maybe now is the time. I'm certainly open to looking at the documents. I mentioned that there is another trust I'd, I'd look to look at too, just to see if we could make some revisions. Um, so yeah, I, I'm open to change because I think, unfortunately, that's the only thing that's going to propel us to the next level. I, I feel like we're just spinning around and we're not getting anywhere. And I do, I do feel like there's some bad vibes uh, on on the committee. So. Thank you, Don. Oh wait, Mary. Okay. Um, I have gone to most of the trust meetings in the 18 months or so that I've been a selectman. Probably missed a handful. And um, my comments two weeks ago about it being dysfunctional are not based on that last meeting. That meeting, there was, there was bad behavior on a couple of people's parts, and I don't think it does any of us any good to go back over that. But that meeting was the culmination of watching 18 months of dysfunction. I think it's five very talented, very... Um, very um, interested in serving the town, very well intended, but there's some chemistry imbalance in that five people that they cannot get along. And I know as a business person, the only way you change that kind of chemistry, that it's a culture. It, the culture of that committee is dysfunctional. The only way I know how to fix it is to trade out a few players. Not saying that those players are at fault, just it's the easiest transition. Their term ends, they could be renewed, but their term ends in June. So I'm suggesting we change them out now and try to move forward. We say housing is an emergency, so I think it needs emergency action. Thank you, Mary. Done. Well, I'm going to observe the fact that we opened up the meeting talking about how many vacancies we have in appointees and we're going to end it with firing uh, volunteers. So that's, that's rich. Uh, 
in terms of the chemistry. <coughs> Uh, it might be, might be worth your noting, because we do this all the time on town meeting, that it's 591 days since we went to the closing of the Marsline property. It's been 508 days since the chair was the town administrator. So unless you're going to say that every single meeting is the fault of the trust, I can't get anything on the agenda, and I can't get... Uh, the current chair to respond to anything. Everything is posted two hours before the minimum 48 hours. There's no movement. There, nothing, nothing that we've discussed winds up getting on an agenda. There should be a fast and easy way of doing this because there's a property that we wanted to sh uh, flip that we have not had a discussion over in two months. But I, I asked this chair uh, for that discussion because it would have provided the money to be able to talk about a buy down along with the land to do an RFP at the Marsline property. That, be that as it may, that last meeting, I wholly disagree with your characterization of it. I was sitting there between the chair and between Judith. There wasn't bad behavior on everybody's part. I mean, I tried to diffuse that myself. I felt super uncomfortable. And the town may have been apologized to, but nobody on the trust got that. I haven't received a return phone call on, the, on behalf of the trust in months. I haven't received answers to any emails that I have in months. We need to be able to pull together as an organization and do something. Because let me point out to you that uh, I only acted as chair for 10 months. It's not five years yet. It will be in J July. Then there was COVID for two years. We could not really go forward with a plan because we couldn't have any t meetings with the public. We were doing everything by Zoom. I had such high hopes for this year. And it's not as if I don't know how this works. I mean, I've said this to you and I said it to, uh, to Julie. I've personally been responsible for the creation of 150 plus units in this town through the years, over 25 years. I've been involved with Hesh. I know the people who have created other housing. It is, it's a hard thing to actually get from here to there, and I know you know the regulatory process. The RFP is the key to this thing. And I do know that uh, there was, uh, as Judith, and I'm gonna use this word advisedly, was lacerated in that meeting over her comment about 80%. I just went into uh, the meeting of 1128 at the 10 minute mark, and it was explicitly said by the chair that was less, less than 60%. Unless we cleared up the percentage that DHCD was calling affordable, we couldn't put the RFP out. I asked several times for a clarification about that on the record. Nothing has ever been provided. And then all of a sudden, miraculously, it became 80. And that's, you were at that meeting where you said, well, 30 and 40 are part of 80. That's nonsense, because the RFP has to be controlled by the outermost uh, area median income that's available to be built for. None of this is rocket science. If we could free up the RFP, you're not seeing dysfunction about everybody hating each other. As a matter of fact, the other four of us get along really well. This is a question of it's extremely cumbersome. And, I, and regardless of what the chair just said earlier, if you go back to that last trust meeting and you listen, the current chair said, I am a professional who works for the Board of Selectmen. That has always been there. Uh, for us to understand that the Board of Selectmen basically controls the trust. If you want to do with this, you can do this. There is nothing in the document that prohibits you. The question is, should you do this? Other towns have this for cause. They don't have this broad, you could drive a bus through it uh, loophole where you can just remove anybody anytime. You start removing people routinely, you're not going to have any trust members. This is hard. The entire process of buying the Marsline property from beginning where they approached us to end was six months. I consider that a singular accomplishment. Nothing else happened before that because of COVID and because I didn't get there for four months in and Chris kind of waffled around. But again, 508 days since the chair changed. And you, again, do whatever you want. If, you can, if you're saying that we can't play nice in the sandbox, that's fine. But I expect something to happen in a few months then. Mr. Waystack. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We're better than this. This community is better than this. If there's an organization 
one of the mantras is one day at a time. People have bad days. I don't think it's about the last meeting. I don't think it's about 518 days, 508 days. My concern is this, and I'm gonna disagree with some people who are very good friends of mine here tonight. It's about the fact that you have members of a trust that were interviewed by your interview committee. You as a board appointed those people to the trust. I just talked about two gentlemen who gave their commitment to this community. One could be tough to work with at times. And we had some animated meetings. Set the meeting aside. I think it's a bad precedent to remove people because we don't agree with what they're doing. We've had boards here that members have not gotten along, that members have disagreed, sometimes very vocally. I've sat in a number of committees where people have disagreed. We're better than this, Harwich. We need to get past this. You have every right to do what you want to do tonight. But I think if you remove two members, and I'm not going to get into names, and I'm hoping to God we can stop pointing fingers at each other. And I think you have a right in your reappointment phase in June to either reappoint or find new members. To let members go midterm is very difficult to do. The people who are watching this, the people who will be reading about this in the paper this week, will find it difficult to sit at a board, to sit at a meeting to say, if I disagree with someone, with either a chairman or my board of selectmen, that I could be recalled, I could be fired. I think it's a terrible precedence to set for this community. I think we need to move forward. I'm a housing advocate. You all know I've been working diligently on behalf of housing. I'd love someday to serve on the housing trust. I would never serve on it if two people were let go prior to their reappointment. I think the appropriate time if you want to take action is when your reappointments are up. I hope you will not take the action tonight to let two members go that you as a board interviewed and appointed and because we don't like the way they have acted, and it's a lot of folks who have not acted correctly, set it aside. Yes, we need to get something done. I've attended the last few meetings. I've watched those meetings, and I want to be a part of what's happening for housing in this community. But don't set the precedent so when people, when we ask people to put their information together for the town to be appointed to a committee, they say, do I want to do this or not? We need to be encouraging people to be a part of this community how much we are better than this. I ask you not to move forward with this tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Mark Kelleher, West Howard. Uh, <clears throat> I'm against removing anybody at this point in time. I think it would be divisive, and especially in view of recent events, it hints of retribution. Um, there'll be a new board in May, either one or two members. Uh, in the meantime, this existing board could maybe set up some interim be benchmarks I'd like to see accomplished. Or maybe they could give some more authority to either the town administrator or somebody on the board to make more decisions and move it forward. I just think now is not the right time. I, I, I think we have a lot at stake here. We don't want to be infighting. And as Richard said, we need to move forward. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you, Mark. Just a few responses from me, and I'll go back to the board. Um, I have a great deal of respect for Mr. Waystack. Um, I disagree with him on this one, and, and we've had that conversation. This is not a committee. This is a trust. And, and Don states are Don states, and Don statements are Don statements. I didn't want to come in here tonight and get into it with Don, nor will I. When Don was removed as the chair, he looked at me and he looked at the town administrator Clearly, he hadn't read the documents, the trust documents, because he was never supposed to be chair. Trust documents state the town administrator shall be the chair. He looked at both of us and said, if I'm removed as chair, I will have a hissy fit of epic proportions. That's exactly what has happened. And I believe it's a lot, it's longer that he's been, that he was chair than he's saying, but I'm not going to get into dates with him. The trust is broken. The town administrator is the chair of the trust until he designates somebody else, and that's not a board appointment. 
four members are board appointments. Marsline property, we can all debate Marsline property, but we probably should have had a vision for that property and an RFP in mind before we purchased it. Instead, we purchased more land that we already have plenty <coughs> of, and we've helped nobody with housing. And the past and what we've done in the past is what we've done in the past. It wasn't until the current chair brought forward how many properties are about to come off the affordable list that they brought those organizations in to see if we can save them. So not only have we not gone forward, we've gone backwards. Don looked at me also and said, good luck getting a quorum. And if I would just tell the public to watch the meetings, look at the posted meetings, look at the canceled meetings, and form your own opinion. But those meetings and that threat was, we won't have a meeting. And the, and the members that he promised wouldn't show up, didn't show up. The trust <coughs> is broken. And Don, I'm not going to make this about you and I, because it's not. You promised to do something, you did it, and here we are today. And the town administrator, again, has been put in a position where he's got a board member that didn't even do a performance evaluation because you were removed as trust. And we can, you told me that, <coughs> you told me that. And again, I'm not gonna go back and forth. Unfortunately, you played it, you played it, you played it, you played it, and here we are today, and it's the board's decision tonight, not mine. And this, Richard, I do agree with you, this is not about one member of the trust. This is about the trust in its entirety. There's not one member that I wanna single out. Mary's suggestion made sense to me because the town deserves to go forward on affordable housing. And waiting four more months to look in the rearview mirror of what we didn't do. And I would just tell the public also, the meetings are public record, the minutes are public record, and the trust members' emails are public records. Anybody can make their own assessment if they look enough. And as the executive body of the town, I think it's time that we stop it. It's not a good look. It's a terrible look. But it's more of a terrible look to me watching every other town around us do something for affordable housing and us talk about our RFP that we're not even close to. And we can't blame one person. And then by the time the RFP goes out and there's response and building happens, we're at least three years away from that. And lastly, because I was accused of not putting something on the agenda that Don asked me about two months ago. In fact, it came up a year and a half ago. Again, a year ago again six months ago, and again maybe two <coughs> months ago by you. It's chapter 97 land that has to go before town meeting. My last comment to you was, it's before legal right now, and we're waiting on an opinion. We can't just sell that piece of property. Town meeting has to approve it, and then the legislator has to approve it. I told you that. You're trying to make me look bad, and I have nothing to do with the trust except for to say, it's time this board does something about a dysfunctional trust. Larry? Uh, Don, do you want to uh, use hand up? or I can go ahead because uh, I guess I'm where I started, however, is that uh, it's not clear to me why the trust isn't working. You know, is it two members, is it four members? I do like to look at the uh, trust document. Uh, maybe uh, some of this activity has cleared the air. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't want to look backwards. What I'd like to do is look forward at this point. And how can we make sure that the trust functions properly? Do we need to go back to the trust document? We can do that quickly. Uh, so at this point, I'm reluctant to, to change the trust because I'm not sure the trust makeup is the issue, quite frankly. Just to clarify, it would take this board's vote, the trust vote, Town meeting so, vote, and then the so it's not quick. So it's time. Not going to happen. Not going to happen anytime soon. Don. <clears throat> I don't know where to begin, and I'm not going to go through everything you said because you're making up a lot of this stuff in whole cloth. Uh, the words "hissy fit" were used in that meeting relative to the structure of this, and I go to the same place where I, where I was when I had that meeting with you and with Joe a year and a half ago. The organizational structure is difficult to understand because it functioning because you've got the same individual who answers to the board of selectmen and presumably to the trust. If the trust, and that was the central question, if the trust votes some way that the board of selectmen doesn't, 
what master does the trust chair serve? And that's a legitimate question. That's why I did that. And secondarily, I don't know where your time frames are coming from, but it was literally 10 months. That, and I was acting as chair because there was no full-time town administrator until subsequent to that point when we appointed Joe. And then Joe became that in September of that year. So there was no, and I, I didn't say anything at all about that. We, I acquiesced to that. All I ask for, for anybody who's a member and who's chairing something, is they not operate it as their own <coughs> thing. They, I, I would expect to get some feedback if I ask for something to get on their agendas. And I know that that was what was Larry's uh, was, uh, problem was. I know that was what Judith's problem was. Uh, I don't know about anybody else, but I know a lot of people complain they can't get phone calls back from Joe. I make lots of them. I, I've actually said to his face, I'd like to talk to you. There's, there is a dysfunction, but to lay that all on me is rich. I made several comments. I didn't lay anything all on you. Trust documents, Don, you voted for them. You made the motion to approve them. Yep. They've never changed. Yep. So the time to realize they were screwed up was before we voted on it. If, if you'll indulge me here, I went back to that meeting and it was less than a minute and 22 seconds. We said that it was exactly the same as what passed town meeting. And at that point, I came back on the board for the first time two months before that and actually had this naive belief I could trust everybody. And I did make that motion. But having gone back to look at it, it was like, wow, this, doesn't look, this is really unusual because they're not, it's not like most of the other trust documents. It just isn't and you feel free to go out and look yourselves at it, it's, we're caught up in process and that was my major concern. If you're saying that we shouldn't have done anything with the Marsline property, fine, but the trust has that decision to make. And you know yourself, and Larry certainly knows, that I approached the chair of the Board of Selectmen and said we had this opportunity. We had an executive session of the Board of Selectmen, Steve and I had talked about this, and it was generally accepted, you didn't have any objections back then, it was accepted that that was a really great start to be able to do something. I still feel that way. Nearly 14 acres of upland, all of it developable. You want, you want to cut that loose? Fine. If you want to translate that back into money, great. Then we're back five years. I'd just like to trust to make that decision along with doing their due diligence before you close on a piece of property. That, that, that's my problem with the Marceline property we is the lack that. of due diligence. We did do that. Um, Please don't say that. Julie? Just as a follow-up, I mean, we're having an open discussion. I, I appreciate what Richard uh, said, and, and I like a lot of what Richard said in terms of trying to move forward and trying mm -hmm. to stay on track and then determining what to do. But what I would ask, and again, having not attended a lot of the meetings and watched that particular meeting, I, I was puzzled as to why the discussion on AMI, which seemed to really elevate everything, was even being had. Because it was a, a week or two before that, your meeting, that we were already clarified what AMI was. So speaking to the dysfunction, there's, if you're going to function as this trust, and you're going to move us forward. Why is nobody else saying, let's table that. We already have numbers. We don't need to revisit the past. And to me, if you, if you all can make a commitment to move forward and address what we really need to address, that's fine. But if you're going to go back and rehash and try to throw somebody under the bus for saying a wrong number, I, I don't know how you get out of that unless the whole group of you says enough. We need to move forward. We don't need to rehash things that were incorrect. Everybody makes a mistake. Everybody has a bad meeting, as Richard said. But to me, that discussion was just looking to continuously harp on one thing, one number, versus saying, we got it. We know. Let's go. Let's, let's keep talking. I think the Marceline property is a wonderful property. I, I'm very much interested in developing that property. So I, I don't have a problem with that. Um, you know, if we can revise our trust to move forward, to streamline it even better as we go, fine. But, but back to the question at hand, 
you're either dysfunctional or you're not, or you're committed to not being dysfunctional. Which to me, there was an opportunity there for that conversation to end and, and to move forward. And I didn't see it happen. And so if, you're, if, if I can see that this trust is gonna do something about tabling the disagreements for the betterment of the town and the improvement of housing, then I have a different opinion. But I, I guess that's my question. Actually, if you could get past the rancor of that meeting, I did say that. I said, I think we all agree that 80% is the number now. And people started nodding. I said, so why are we arguing over something that we agree with? It's actually in the content of that meeting. But it, it took a long time to get there. Well, I was kind of ducking for cover. Oh. Mary? <clears throat> um, some of this conversation is dysfunctional. We've had this type of conversation a couple of times. We had a joint meeting of the trust and the selectmen. I don't know how many months ago was that? Maybe, December maybe 12th, three months actually. ago? What? December 12th. December 12th? Mm -hmm. So not as long ago as I thought. And that was supposed to be an opportunity for everyone to kind of say their piece and move forward, and yet we're still in circular motion. I too have a lot of respect for Richard and for Mark and, and appreciate your comments. I don't see it changing without changing the players. I've managed people for 50 years and a group that is that locked in to ego, position, and what's right and you're not gonna break that. You need new chemistry in there. That's my 10 cents. Thank you, Mary. Joe, I'm reluctant to do it, but you want to jump in on this conversation as the chair of the housing trust in the position that you're in, as well as town administrator. So I'd like to start with the word no, <laughs> um, but I'd like to clarify that. So your agenda talks about discussion on removing trustees from the board of trustees of the Harwich Affordable Housing Trust Fund in accordance with Article 5 of the Declaration of the Trust Document, votes may be taken. Um, I've only heard one trust member's name put out there, and it was my name and my title and my position. And um, I just need to put it on the record for everybody that I'm on very uneven footing here, and I have been for... Um, um, sorry, I'm trying to do math. Um, it always stalls me. Um, since May of 2019, when I came here as the assistant town administrator, and um, six months to the day, um, I was put in the position of interim administrator. Um, I just, I need to put it out there that Aside from the folks that we aren't serving for affordable housing, I remain of the belief that I have the most to lose. I, um, I pride myself on how I've operated for 35 years in public life. And for those who are doing the math, I literally started when I was 19. It um, destroys a part of me to have to make the apology that I had to make. And to be clear, no one put me up to that apology. That was my own work and my own decision and my own action because it required it. I have said since I started here that to live and work in the same town, not, not to live and to run for office, and not to live and to serve on a committee, but to live and work, especially in a role such as an administrator, which is a crucible, to live, to work, to raise a family, to be at a meeting for you, your daughter at school and to have your daughter see the front page of the newspaper, first time you made it, in the newspaper, above the fold, 
in five years. And it's because I made an apology. And so to have my daughter go into a meeting with me and see that and say, Dad, what happened? And say, don't worry about me. Let's worry about you and get through the meeting. I am on uneven and unequal footing. I will match my statements. I will make affidavits if I ever needed to. But that is the last act of a man who no longer works here. And I do not want to be that person. There is a trust document that was created by the Board of Selectmen of the Town of Harwich on July 9, 2018. And anyone can go back in the record to see what that document was. It's the same one that sits in front of me tonight. Who voted on that? Who signed it and who didn't? And how it's been operating? But I cannot lose sight of the fact that by virtue of serving in a job that I love for a town that I am more than overjoyed to be a part of, and if God lets me, will stay here for the rest of my breathing days. But if you read that document, it's a legal document that dictates a process. And my mistake was when I became aware of it over two years ago, was to bring it to the attention of board members. And I do it again. Because I have always believed in the sanctity of governing documents, and that's what this is. So no, I don't want to say anything tonight. I don't want to say anything that I just said. I don't want to be here right now. But I will, I am, and we can move forward. But I can't let the moment pass without putting that on the record. That of everybody assembled in this room, I remain of the opinion that I stand to lose the most. Thank you. Thank you. Anything further? Any parting comments or motions from anyone on the board? Larry? Well, as I, I feel like I'm being wimpy about this, but I'm really struggling with moving, the, moving ahead because it seems to me, it, it, it's unclear to me yet, as of today, on why we haven't gone ahead with the RFP. Even with the debate as we've had, uh, what prevented that? And, uh, it, it, you know, was that just a process as bad? I don't think so. People had good uh, motion. Was it Joe involvement? I don't think so. But it's not clear if we, uh, if we move to, does that, does that change the, uh, whoever's stopping is going forward? I can understand that better, number one. Number two is, is uh, if, if the board is so dysfunctional, uh, why don't we start at ground zero? Why don't we uh, move everyone and reappoint, start over again? We could do that almost immediately and look at the entire board if that's the issue because, you know, if we point out too, it takes, it takes more than two to tangle it. There's gotta be an, another side of that issue of a discussion group. And we could, maybe we appoint Maybe we don't reappoint two if that's the issue, but uh, I, you know, I didn't attend all the meetings, Mary, so I didn't, don't understand all the fallback on that. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not going to look back at discussions between you know Michael and Don, for instance, you two. It's not, I don't find that particularly relevant at the moment because we are where we are. <clears throat> and I don't see, if we do this, I like a clear indication of, of how that's going what factually is it going to do to improve it? Are we going to be guaranteed if we point to others that they're going to be in harmony? And if they're in harmony, is that in our best interest? We want an open discussion. We want it in better, better, more respectful, obviously, than maybe we've had. But I'm just, I'm just uncertain. I wish I, I wish I wasn't, but I am. Uh, just to quote Larry Brophy in our December 12th meeting, change is good. Um, I, I don't argue that. Larry? I, to talk. Yeah, I know I did start to talk, um, but then I was uh, reacting to something Larry said. I, I, I get 
your your indecision and, and how do we know what will really fix this. Um, I think the the hard part is it's been a lot of the behind the scenes and um, you know you might call it I don't, I don't know what to call it but working to undermine the town administrator who is our employee and I feel like some members of the trust have worked to undermine him and I don't think that's fair to him and as his employer I don't feel right about watching it happen and I've watched it happen at several meetings and as Michael mentioned early on when Joe became the chair because he found out he had to be the chair he didn't go looking for it he had plenty to do but he found out he had to be the chair all of a sudden people weren't available for meetings several I, I came here at least twice and found out oh sorry that got canceled um, so it's that and I think if it's new players there won't be already a, a group that thinks they can undermine him and I you know Joe and I have had conversations we all have things we do well things we don't do well but I support him as our town administrator. I think he does quite good work. That's a new element. If it's, some, if it's something behind the scenes that I'm not aware of is trying to undermine it, that that's, that's unacceptable. I would agree with that. I, I'll start the conversation and I'll start it with Don. Don, are you willing to step down as the selectman appointee um, to allow another selectman to get on there? Clearly this, whether it's Joe's fault or your fault, clearly this has, has um, changed the relationship because, you know, in reading the um, social media attacks this week, I, I remember back when Joe applied for the job and I didn't vote for him. And, and you yourself hung me out to dry on that, so did Sandra Hall. Now it appears to me that the two of you want him out of here so badly that you'll do anything to get him out of here. Would you step down as, as uh, the selectman's appointee on the, on, on the trust as a start? No. Okay. You can remove me because that's really what you want to do, and you've been wanting to do that since April of 2021 when you sent the email that you would step aside to have me investigated. This has been a long-term thing. I can work with anybody. Well, that's an interesting conversation, Don. It's not an interesting conversation. You no, write something is. and you write it. It is. No, that's great. It is. And um, maybe... Someone should do a public records request on all the documents for the purchase and uh, the executive session. Sure. Okay. But getting back to the relationship, I can work with anybody. I am as frustrated as anybody, and you two know that from having gone to the MMA about uh, my frustration level about not doing any, uh, getting stuff done and about things that are impediments. Uh, as far as far as that goes. Be happy to meet with Joe, but that's been festering now for three, four months anyway. I've asked to see him. I don't, I don't have a calendar like the town administrator. It really boils down to when he's got a time to be able to do it. I'd be most happy to do that, but if you remove me, I'm still a selectman, so there's that. Well, that's, a, that's, a great, that's a great statement for the public, Don. Um, I, then I'm just going to jump out. I, I would make a motion that... Uh, Don Howell will be removed from the Housing Trust. I'll second it. Discussion. Larry? That's a big step, but that would make the Housing Trust functional. i consider it. And really? Don, I hate to say that. But. Yeah, I feel the same. I feel, you know, I, I've, I've heard of this dysfunction behind the scenes, and I don't like to hear that that's true either. And the same token... You know, Don, you have an opportunity to improve a situation if there's this other stuff going on, and Joe doesn't because he's got to be part of the trust. And so I find it unfortunate that we'd be forced to end up in this route. But as much as I struggle with trying to, you know, remove people or as the other two, you know, both Richard and, and Mark, you know, I struggle with removing people from committees. On the same token, I struggle with the idea that we've got this trust that, that is really our power to move forward and we cannot do it. Then we have an opportunity to have a discussion about whether you're willing to come you know, off of that to improve that situation and you're not willing to do that. 
Can I ask why? A couple of a couple of reasons, but primarily, you guys just appointed me this past July, reappointed me. It just happened. If you had these concerns, I wish you would address them at the time because these are you're alleging that they're long-term dysfunctional problems, and that's. I don't see where that which, where that move makes a difference. If it gets to that point, fine, I'll resign. But I'm just saying. I'm not going to be the fall guy for the inaction. The only thing that happened positively during the whole four and a half years of that trust I was involved with. And I feel that I could help get that developed because I have knowledge of that. The last eight, six houses that were built here were directly re related to actions I took with Hesh and Habitat. Two years of ZBA hearings. I know how the processes work and I know what the laws say, which is why it's been extremely frustrating to pin down things like what AMI are we looking towards? You have to know these things in order to be able to make progress forward. We keep going around in tight little circles and nothing keeps, nothing moves forward, nothing. You can take me away, but I can't believe that everything's just gonna be hunky-dory, although it, would, it was a positive step and I'm hoping that that will remain a positive step to have Brianna here and actually have a housing advocate who can be responsible for these things because the corollary to the problem was I said at the time, and you know I said at the time, I don't see that he's got enough hours in the day to be able to perform these functions. Because it's a daunting thing to do. I, I, I totally get that. And I am not disparaging, he may feel that I am, I'm not disparaging his personality. And the uh, uh, review was about the selectmen. It's not about you know, trust. I didn't do it because I, had, I wasn't feeling well and I told you that. But I also said there are things that are going on, especially in the realm of communications, that I'm unhappy with as a selectman, not as a trustee. So you can conflate all these things. But if I could get calls back, if I could actually meet with him, Chris and I actually, ha strangely, had a very good relationship. All the agenda meetings I attended. We, uh, he was the chair, but I, I was able to have conversations about could we put this on for this meeting and how about this for the next meeting. There is no discussion on this. It just happens. Julie? Hi. So just going back to what you just said. So you didn't do a review, but you just had complaints. That was your opportunity to, to document those com complaints. So that is I, your job as I, a I had bronchitis, and I've told you that. No, but I'm saying there's no reason you can't submit it after the fact. I mean, to document, if you've, especially if you're not happy with certain things, then those should be documented, I, I would think. But ultimately, I go back to saying, you know, you're not willing to step aside. Doesn't mean you couldn't go to trust meetings and share your information, but you could change the dynamic on the board. Mary. Um, Mary. Go ahead. Um, two things. I gotta call you on it, Don. You do not get along with everyone. You have bragged to me before I was a selectman and when I first came on about months that you didn't talk to this one and that one. You somehow perceived that I was ready to nominate you as chair when I had mostly listened on the phone. My husband said, who are you talking to? Because I never said more than two words. Somehow you perceived that meant I was going to recommend you for chair. Then you didn't talk to me because I nominated Michael. I had to ask you to come to a meeting to square that away. That's what grown-ups do. They sit down and they talk things out and you're behind the scenes, not talking to people, stirring things up, and I, I just think this needs to change. The, uh, let's talk about Joe's appraisal. You approached me once. You wanted to have a better relationship with Joe. You asked me if I would help you. And I said, well, let me think about it, and I took a couple of days, and I called you back. And I said, one suggestion I'd have, I know you were sick, so that's why you didn't do the appraisal, and you publicly at the meeting said you agreed with the appraisal that the four of us did. I said, I think it would be huge to Joe if you put something on a piece of paper. You don't need a lot of sentences, one sentence per, I think there's like six paragraphs, one sentence and just check the boxes. That would be a huge message to Joe. That was months ago. 
that's, that's what's wrong with all the behind the scenes stuff. You, you critique Michael, but what he says, he says here openly. And, and I do as well. I'm not behind the scenes trying to create trouble. Well, it's pointless to go through a vote. I'll resign. Um, do we want to, I'll withdraw my motion if uh, Mary with, withdraws her second. Yes. All right, Don, you're right, saying that you, you, you're, you're resigning from the Housing Trust. Thank you. Uh, as stated, uh, before we go on to any more uh, conversation about this, this isn't about Don, it's not about Judith, it's not about Larry, it's not about Brennan, it's not about Joe to me, and it never has there's a timeline, Don, for everything that you said, and, I, and you're right, I do put everything in writing and I do it on purpose because there's a timeline. So anyone that wants to see my documents and the month and a half I gave you to do Joe's performance evaluation, don't act like you called me and I'm putting you on the spot, Don, because you never answer my emails. You rarely answer the telephone and you don't communicate with me. But I still think we're a functional board. We are a functional board. This is a disagreement. <coughs> We vote together sometimes, we don't vote together sometimes. It's the same with all of us. This is about a dysfunctional trust and not moving the needle forward. And what I offered you before I made the motion was your help as a selectman and the selectman appointee to try and change the dynamic of that. I'd love to. And I'm not saying that Joe is 100%. And I'm not saying that any other member on there is 100% but it's not working. Meetings were canceled. And I don't think it's repairable. You said at the last meeting, let's move forward. You might be the only member that wants to move forward, but nothing is moving forward. And that was my point in this meeting, despite what's been written, not to attack you. Does anyone else, uh, do we want to go any further? Uh, originally, there was talk about removing trust members that had uh, expiration dates coming up or waiting. Mary? Um, since I'm the one that originally brought that up, I appreciate your taking that step, Don. I know that isn't your desire, and it takes a big person to do that, so I appreciate that. I suggest we let this ride and see if we can make things work. Okay. Julie? I'm fine with that approach. Uh, other than that, um, I'm still open to looking at the trust document and other trust documents, um, but that's a different agenda item. Larry? Yeah, I, I'm fine with that because this has uh, gone a uh, wrong direction for me. It's gone into a personality, uh, personal discussions on who's doing what to whom, which I'm not comfortable with most of the time, if ever. We have a problem we need to solve, and we should step up and try to solve that in, a, in an objective way. Uh, I've been more outside than others. I would like to step in and try to help that if I can. Uh, I can be maybe more neutral than some of the other discussions I've been involved in, but we need to move this forward because it's not a personality about, we need, and, I, and I would like to keep the board and give them a chance. Thank you. Don? Um, my only comment or suggestion would be to the uh, interview committee, Julie and Larry, and that each member of the trust gets brought in and we have a conversation about how the meetings are supposed to go. They don't have to agree. But um, that last meeting is to, and why this is on the agenda, um, there was bad behavior in that room and it was more than one trust member, never all, um, but more than one. And I do think right. that the trust, uh, the interview committee should be re-interviewing and setting some ground rules, um, especially since reappointments coming up. Mary? Since uh, Larry's offered, can we, uh put him on the trust as the select or does that have to be an agenda item? it has to be an agenda item and uh, Larry will be involved in helping fix this through the interview committee but I will agenda next week um, for a new trust member moving on B this should Mr. be a little chairman go ahead uh, if the board would welcome it could you take a five-minute recess yes <laughs> Thank you. I'm gonna take a five-minute recess <clears throat>
I have, you can have a choice. Any gummies? You can, I wish I, <laughs> I just bought some today. Did you? Yeah. Would you like, this is what kind of soft. That one. Thank you. reconvene the meeting now might take a few things out of order until the town administrator gets back but we should move through part of the agenda could I get a motion on C I so yeah I um, move that we approve the following 2023 annual class for auto repair license renewals uh, number one, Nick and Claudine Enterprises, LLC, doing business as West Harwich Save-On Gas for Route 28. And two, VTech Auto Center, 805 Route 28. Second. Moved and second. Any discussion? No. All in favor? Uh -huh. Aye. Aye. Five zero. Um, e. Don, do you want to do E? Yeah. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. E. This is a first reading of a change in our uh, policy uh, about remote participation, and there are only two changes to the prior document. Uh, they're in the packet, but they are for everybody to be clear about them. Item 2A, uh, uh, item 2 is a member of the board, committee, commission, and so forth, and it gets to change on the fourth line where it says, shall notify the information technology director and channel 18 station manager for remote go to zoom meeting teams access in a meeting room at least 48 hours prior to scheduled meeting so that basically just addresses how they would participate uh, properly and item six where uh, i noticed that in the old document it didn't say what chair so the chair of the board committee or commission must grant such an extension and that's of the committee itself thank you any comments from no. the board larry all set. Uh, Julie? No, no comments. Mary? All set. Okay. Any questions from the public on the uh, change in policy? All set. That's the first reading. It will no. be back next week for the second Good. reading, and then we will uh, have a change policy. No. Just happy we're moving ahead. ahead. Absolutely. Um, I apologize for, to the public for bouncing around a little, but some of the stuff the town administrator needs to be involved in. So going to... Uh, old business B, Larry. Uh, this was a vote. This was to expand the Harwich Accessibility Rights Committee from five full members and two alternates to seven full members with two alternates. Go right, Larry. Let me uh, just just remind you of what the meeting was before the uh, uh, Accessibility Rights Committee. Uh, I guess six weeks ago now, asked me to uh, see if we could if they could uh, expand their committee from five full members to seven full members. Uh, still two alternates, and uh, that was rejected. Uh, you you uh, argued against it. I say you plurally, uh, rightfully so. I uh, I always hate to be voted against, but you, you actually made a good point this time. <laughs> As opposed to the other times. <laughs> As opposed to the other times. But in the past, we've had a quorum problem. And so if by raising it to, uh, from five to seven, would that increase the quorum problem? Mm. Uh, I took that back to the committee uh, actually twice, and both times they were very adamant they felt they needed seven members, they could do that. Uh, in the meantime, Julie and I have uh, interviewed uh, two people, two residents that would very much like to be on the committee as full-time members. I, uh, I contacted each of them to see if they would, uh, basically if I could talk them into joining as alternate members. And they both said, absolutely not. They wanted, if they were going to join, they wanted to be full members. I, uh, I tried to entice them by informing them that uh, if a member is absent, if the chair so declares, they can act as full members. Because sometimes we don't, we, remember, we forget to tell people that, that that's in our bylaws, but with no, uh, no luck. And so I propose that right now we have, uh, as soon as, uh, we can bring them back next time. We've, we've interviewed them. Mm -hmm. we, we'll have seven full-time members, and we should pursue very strongly recruiting for alternate members. So I'd like to uh, uh, ask your uh, support again of moving that from five to seven members, and at least we can start with that. Now, and, and full, ex uh, let you know everything I know, there is one member that has a uh, health problem. He's still... 
wants to be on the committee, but life isn't like, I'm not gonna say that. Uh, I, you know, I can't promise everything going forward, but right now I can, I can say we have, as soon as we put them on here, we'll have seven full-time members. That's my, my spiel and I'm sticking to it. You wanna turn that into a motion? I move that we uh, uh, increase the uh, membership of the Harbor's Accessibility Rights Committee from five full members and two alternates to seven full members with two alternates. Second. Second. Moved and seconded by Julie, and I'll just take that note. Um, any discussion, Don? Nope. Mary? No, and I would think if you do have a need for a replacement, if they're that adamant about the committee, they'll make sure they find someone. I, 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 I would so. put that to them. Yeah. You're counting on them. Um, you're all set, Don. I'm all set. And Julie's all set. Yeah, my only comment is we can always go backwards if we lose quorums. Yes. So, all in favor? Aye. 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 Five zero. And why don't we just get out of the way the two contracts? Can I get a motion on the contracts? Sure. Um, I move that we vote to approve the 2023 golf facility use agreement between New Wading River Country Club LLC in the town of Howard. And B, vote to approve the change order credit and contract time <coughs> extension for GHD for phase three design credit in the amount of 25,000. Second. Moved and second. Any discussion, Larry? None. Mary? No. Julie? No. Anyone in the audience? All in favor? Aye. 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 Five zero. I'm running out of things to do here. Um, Julie, why don't we start with the uh, early childhood? Sure. Um, Item, uh, uh, new business D, discussion early childhood education and fiscal year 2024 human services grants. Right. And I would only say I put the 2024 human services grants in there just so we had information, but certainly this could be part of a funding source uh, for, for this. Go ahead, Julie. Um, so yeah, thank you. I spoke uh, with Lucy uh, again today just to go over the numbers that she shared that I shared and forwarded you all say in your packet. And um, just to see where there are certain, is there certain overlaps? And, and it's been hard gathering all these numbers so that she certainly thinks there may be some overlap. So I guess I'm, I'm curious to see what the board is thinking we should maybe start to, to think about formulating a policy because we certainly seem to have m more kids than other, some of the other neighboring towns. So maybe we look at um, a, a lower number. Uh, I'd rather not see us do a tiered you know, whether they're three or four, I would rather yeah. see us do a flat rate. Um, and maybe we need to come down in what we think we can offer because we have more kids. Maybe we need to look at an income limit. I'm throwing all of these things out there because we also can consider, and, and I did uh, let uh, Lucy know that last week you guys voted to execute the contract for the application for the Bailey Boyd, Bailey Boyd yeah. to you know, so there'll be some, she's got applications going out to families, so there's some monies there that could help. Right. Now, the only other thing on the human um, services stuff that we have in our packet that I wanna just be careful on is that we look at maybe is there other ways in there to fund certain parts, but Lucy pointed out uh, that half of her salary, or a piece of it anyway, comes from some of those monies, right? So we gotta be careful where we think we can pull from. But, but bottom line, just so the public understands again that this is a, a, an endeavor that we as a board could make a new policy to come up with funds that would help um, early childhood education for the kids you know, that from three to five in nursery schools to help defray the cost so that parents are able to work more and have an offset for the amount of money it costs them for childcare and I see that twofold because not only are we helping the parents financially so that they can better their incomes and set, et cetera and hopefully afford rent or buy something, which would be great to stay in town, but also we're helping our school because the kids are getting, they're getting a better chance to get educated prior to getting to kindergarten, which makes the work of our teachers a little easier, that they're coming in with some sort of educational base and, and hopefully 
being able to help families means that maybe the kids could go to school even you know a few more days, longer days, whatever. So that's really the nuts and bolts of what I'm hoping we can achieve. And our numbers, and Lucy's, and I should say that Lucy's uh, title is the Monomoy Fam Family Resource Coordinator for both Chatham Harwich and Cape Cod Children's Place. So, you know, currently the um, elementary school, all the preschool stuff that happens at the elementary school, it's only half days. So you're either morning or afternoon. It's not full. So if you even got into that, you still need probably more childcare, uh, you know, and nursery ed school education. So anyway, I think for now we've got enough kids and stuff that I would like to see us stick to the three to five. I don't know how the rest of the board feels, but um, anyway, that's sort of the starting point. Thank you, Julie. Discussion. Don? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Julie, did you have in mind everything like daycare and preschool because they're not the same thing no it would be it would be preschool but like for instance there's some some preschools like rocking unicorn I, I, I don't think um, she takes any kids from that are under three or 2.9 some of these are different and that's why it's even broken out about you know whether it's uh, zero to two or three to five and but it's so portable I mean that, that's what it's basically asking it's portable because there's a children's place, there's a children's yeah, center, be, there's, right. every, there's different as places. As long as they were Harwich families, yeah. they, and they could go outside of town, they'd have to, because we just, there's not enough daycare providers. And they bring providers. the money with them. Right, okay. and the money would go with them. And as I understand it, you know, um, uh, different towns, whether it be uh, Chatham does an invoice, and literally they just get, um, the invoice goes to the provider, and I mean, Sorry, the provider sends the invoice and the town pays. The family's not involved in the money at all, which is wonderful because it's one less thing for them to have to deal with, and yet they know that the child care is paid. So, you know, and their kids benefiting, they're able to bank some money. I mean, it's all around, I think, a great way to help families. So, yes, to your point, to your question, yes. It would be portable, but it would be based on kids three to, you know, three to five going to nursery school. My only concern here is we've, I'm riffing off of uh, Jim Noonan here. Uh, we've been level funded in this for a while. It, it's kind of like picking which of your children you like the best. If you start balkanizing the, uh, the human services grants, which haven't gone up, and yet the need for those services has, go has gone up, especially during COVID. Right. Uh, there's a lot of places that are sucking wind because they, we either semi open or weren't open. Uh, if we start taking away you know, s some of that funding from this, especially in here where we have the kind of colossal free cash that we got, I I'm not sure that we're ever going to get some of these things back again because I can't believe that everybody who's getting those grants is still going to provide services with no money. And Don, I only put that in for a conversation point just because we have them not suggesting that we take it out, just an idea. Well, just as somebody who works with charitables, but I'm just saying to say that well, you're gonna keep giving us services even though we're not gonna keep giving you money, I think is overly optimistic, I yeah. really do. Larry? Thank you, Julie. <laughs> 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 well, I think, I think obviously you have to work out some more details, mm -hmm. and, but I think our issues, uh, at least for me, is not the details, I'm leaving that up to people that are smarter than I am on childcare. Our issue is how do we, uh, as Don has indicated in the mic, how do we fund it? So as quickly as we can come up with some estimate of what the funding is going to be, so we can talk about the sources, I think that's what our I think that's our discussion. Exactly. I'm yeah. not. Yeah. I, I'm not. I can't. I'm not. I don't know enough about it to enter into the intelligent discussion on the details that you brought up. Um, the the other thing I know you said some some towns do it income based, and I would suggest where we're trying to find money for this, yeah. and we're starting that it should be income-based. Not that every parent couldn't use help, right. but maybe we have some type of a scale. Um, I think we need numbers to know if we can make it work and probably mm -hmm. uh, Anne-Marie and Joe to tell us if it can work. Go ahead, Marie, and then I'll get to Joe. Yeah, so, so exactly, Mary, that's what I'm thinking is as I'm looking at the numbers, the numbers are, are more than you know we could probably do in terms of up to 10,000 without an income limit and all that. And I think that's what we need to figure out is 
what monies can we depend on and and you know maybe we even say well initially we're going to try this and see what we can sustain and if we can increase it so you know maybe it even comes to, to five but I don't know what that number is and we certainly need help from Joe and Anne Marie the other thing I would say too though is and again, this doesn't solve it as a budget issue, so I'm not saying that, but we did learn at MMA that opera money could be used for nearly yeah, anything, anything now. Almost, so yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying, like, if we needed to say, okay, well, next year we could do blah, 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 but this year, you know, maybe we could use some opera funds to sort of block that hole that we're, we're seeing. So I'm open to whatever we can do in, in whatever way we can draft this so that we get it to this town meeting. Mary? And, and to Don's point, maybe a piece of the free cash, if that isn't mm. all spoken for. Right. Again, that's a one year. Well, actually, didn't you say, I think we're not supposed to use that for operational. No. No, we're not. Right. 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 I'm not sure if this is operations if you're subsidizing a stipend. Okay. You're, you're not obligated yeah. to do it every year. But, but the point is, is that we have to be careful what we do this year because people expect it for that's right. Uh, outline yeah. years too. Right. So we got, we right. can't look at just this one year. Right. So you know, wh I initially came, brought this to the board, saying, you know, other towns do, and not every town's the same. But I, I, I go to ten thousand. It's in Chatham. They go up to ten thousand. It's not automatic. But if you're bringing your kid and you have those funds, you know, those bills, they'll pay up to ten thousand. You know, unfortunately, childcare is super expensive, and there's not enough of it. And, you know, and again, to Dawn's point, I'm not just talking child care. I'm talking like kids going and, you know, from three to five that they're, it's important that they're involved in, in any kind of daycare, nursery school setting because they're learning by being out of their houses and, you know, playing with other children and whatever else, that, you know, the provider is able to, to do. So I just think it's really important. And I also think same, you know, we, we looked at the budget saw in the paper anyway the, the budget numbers on the schools I mean I'm not surprised we're going to see increases because of all the results of COVID and all the extrapolation that that brings to the school system of different needs that they've never faced before and you know again children their learning their education their mental health is so important on any given day but it's so much even more impacted since COVID so whatever we can do to help kids get ready for school is only going to help them when they're in school. So the board have a problem with Julie working with the town administrator and the finance director and coming back with a policy and some numbers. She brought it forward. I think it's only fair. <laughs> only fair. I'm, I'm hundred percent behind that. We're, we're all in back. Here, okay. Julie. Awesome. <laughs> Thank Joe, you. Joe, do you want to add anything or just uh, look forward to your conversation with Julie? Um, I w well, I would like to add something uh, quickly and I promise it'll be quickly. Um, you know, when you talk about free cash and anything else, I've always said that a budget is a statement of our priorities. And so, you know, as we analyze the numbers, there should be a real discussion about whether we codify this by having it be part of the budget. Mm -hmm. All right. Right. You all set, Julie? Yep. Thank right. you. Thank you. Um, I'm, I'm probably still bouncing around, but um, <coughs> item G, uh, which Carol's been so patiently sitting in the back. <laughs> um, review and take action, General Law, Chapter 268A, Section 19, Disclosure from Carol Ridley, Community Preservation Committee. Um, this we had uh, similar last week, which is Old Business A. Joe, you had some comments on this, I believe, or suggestion? Uh, suggestion, well, first of all, the comment is to Carol and earlier to John Ketchum. Thank you uh, for your service and for going through this process. Um, unfortunately, in the Commonwealth, um, you know, with changes to laws and all that, these kind of actions are now required. Um, but I want to um, emphasize that what Ms. Ridley has put in for her application would be the recommended action, meaning she's planning on recusing herself from uh, the portion of CPC that deals with um, the application, a.k.a. the bucket. Uh, mm -hmm. And I think that's more than appropriate. Um, there had been some discussion with some ethics officials on whether any CPC member that has a perceived conflict would have to recuse themselves from the entire process. But I don't see the logic in that, in that there's competition amongst applications within budgets, I mean within buckets. There's not similar competition 
for all applications because we do um, you know, identify them through the buckets itself. So I would recommend that the board authorize the chair to accept the form and for the determination by the board through the appointing authority would be that um, the individual will recuse herself for all relative application discussions at CPC. Um, Mary? Uh, just one question on that, Joe. Do, does the CPC committee decide as a whole how much money goes into each bucket? <coughs> so then there would be a recusal for that point that, as well then. Thank you. And thank you for the question. Item. Yep. Okay, thank you. Carol, any questions, comments, or with the new information you get that? So I just want to be clear for the record. So I will recuse from the application. Um, what, what was suggested in my paperwork to you was that I would recuse from the direct application. Um, but what I'm learning this evening is I should also recuse from any decision the committee makes with respect to funding that bucket. Okay, that's fine. And then also I'm suggesting to recuse myself from another article in another bucket that isn't really directly related but could be perceived to be somewhat related. So that's just maybe a, um, the fire association uh, application. So, um, so that would also be a recusal. And I've noted because of my volunteer involvement with the CDP, um, to recuse from that article as well. So there would be three then I would be recusing from, three actions. Okay. Yes. Terrific. Don't Thank you. Make a motion? Yeah, go ahead. You know, make a motion that we have received uh, Carol Ridley's disclosure of a potential conflict <coughs> of interest and in that uh, the remediation is appropriate that she recuses herself in the three areas as we discussed tonight. Second. Moved and seconded. Further discussion? No, I just care. I appreciate you, and as I did, John. Uh, well, before I make mine, let me, uh, I can always start over. Let's give Dave uh, Nixon a chance. Dave Nixon, Chair of CPC. One question. I understand the concerns about recusal for the amounts of monies, but what about discussion? Can the person be involved in the discussions? No. No. So it's completely eliminated. Recusal means you go away. Completely. Away from behind uh, the scenes. Not in, in the room. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, moved and second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you, Carol. Um, I'm not going to jump back up to the newsletter, and I don't think I missed anything else. I'm taking that last. <laughs> Can I get a motion on old business A, which was uh, John Ketchum's? I move that we review and take action on General Law Chapter 268A, Section 19, Disclosure Form, John Ketchum Community Preservation Committee. And accept it. I think we want to accept yeah, it. Oh, to uh, accept, he's sorry. Yeah. <laughs> and accept. To, to accept. Uh, second. Okay. Moved and second. Any discussion? <coughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Joe, we are now to Old Business C. Uh, discuss creating a 2023 annual town meeting article for Judah Eldridge. Will you just um, tell the board where we're at with that one? Um, certainly. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, in your packet, you'll see um, under old business that there is material uh, dating back to the original article. Um, so having worked with council in preparation of the public hearing, as we talked about at an earlier um, meeting, um, the snag that we've hit upon is the original article had an appropriation not to exceed $369,000 um, and we were hoping to rely upon uh, what was referred to as LAND or land grants. Um, the town did make an effort to receive those grants but they were not successful. So the only money that the town has available is the net proceeds for that article and the difficulty now becomes with um, there either needs to be an updated appraisal, which I would not recommend, or if we don't go with appraisal, we go simply by the assessor's property card. And the assessor's property card, as you can imagine, where values have gone up over 20% on average in Harwich, uh, shows a value of over $700,000. So um, we need to find a way uh, to fund the entire anticipated takings um, based on the assessor's property card. So 
presumably that would be an appropriating article at town meeting. Don. <laughs> it's just very disappointing. <laughs> uh, shows that we have to take action like as soon as town meeting happens. But I, I'm not even sure where we're gonna come up with that kind of money to put in reserve. Uh, and this would be a this would be an appropriation with the same telling town <coughs> meeting that we're not spending the money, we're ultimately gonna get it back. Yeah, but unless the public somebody needs comes forward. Yeah, the public needs to understand, though, that we have to sequester the money for a period of time. So even if they get it back, they're not getting it back tomorrow. Right. Uh, we have to actually hold this aside as if somebody were in front of us. Joe, you might be able to tell us, uh, before we get to the rest of the board, how much money do we have invested in this project so far? Um, I wouldn't be able to tell you that because we haven't tabulated all the costs related to legal. Yeah, so um, it was more that we know that um, acts related to the uh, article um, were funded through the article. So 369 was a gross number, and then that number I think is around 350, um, separate from all the other costs that go into it. Larry? Uh, no, I don't, I don't know how much to add to that, your discussion. I don't know how we, because uh, in the short term, it's real money we have to take away. So, and, it's, and we've almost doubled from where it was from the appropriation, it's not even close. I, my question is, what's the difference? Between, uh, the, what was the appraisal for? Is that was that a lot less than the assessor, assessor's value? Yes. I didn't hear the whole thing. I apologize. What was the original appraisal? The original appraisal. Uh, that I don't know, uh, but I can go back through the files. Uh, what we do know is, you know, we've done appraisals um, in this new market, so to speak, where we were expecting it to be one value and invariably they come back at a much higher cost. So the expected appraisal, we would expect that it might exceed the property card of 700,000. Nothing more. Thank you, Mr. Chair. There's two things that we shouldn't lose sight of. One is the CPC because they, they wanted this process done. I believe they wanted this done for several years now. Uh, so. But the other part of this is, this is an extraordinarily important piece of property. That's why we took the, uh, the move in the first place. It, it, it abuts the, uh, the DC PC6 uh, Ponds District. Uh, it's well worth protecting. I mean, it's just a question of how we get from here to there. It's really daunting that it's costing that much more, but it's still, it's not less worthwhile than it was yesterday. Hmm. Mary? And it's not gonna get cheaper. Oh. Um, I, I say we still go forward. Julie? Can we reapply for any of the grants? So, or are we just out because we didn't? Joe? Not beyond the realm of possibility. We're just not aware of any at present. Okay. Um, but the article does allow for that action. Yeah, I think we continue to move forward. So the ask tonight really is, um, do we want the town administrator to create an article and put a dollar amount in there for this, <laughs> this annual town meeting? Um, and to Don's point, this is what happens. This was voted in 2018, and it is 2022. Three. We had 20. We had done <laughs> it here, right? 23. If it's, I, I lost a year earlier. Um, <laughs> 2023. If we had done it in 18, we would have walked away for just over 400,000, if memory serves me correct. So it's not fair to them. I mean, no. they've had their money out there. Uh, they've been up this property for they've years. They've been very, very patient with us. So, uh, consensus of the board for Joe to work on an article for town meeting? Yes. 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 That's a yes, Joe. Thank you. Um, I think the only one I missed was uh, a newsletter. Uh, new business B, discussion on town newsletter. Joe? I, I believe this starts with Mary. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Mary. <laughs> Mary suggested this uh, a while ago. Um, I just would like the town to be a source of news. And I was waiting until um, Ellen's replacement was in to really start lobbying. But I think when the admin staff is position is filled and we now have a very capable IT director in Sarah, that I'd like to see us do something like Chatham's newsletter. It comes out weekly, 
And you know, theirs is like six pages long. We don't have to be that fancy. I think if the depart, I could just think of some of the things that were said tonight, like when Carolyn gives her spiel on what's going on in the community center. It'd be great to have a little block on that. And, and Kara could do the cultural center. You know, everybody that gets up and speaks could have a spot in here. It would take us a while to build, um, you know, the email addresses, but I think it would grow. So I would like to see us move forward with that. Larry. Uh, thank you, Michael, and thank you, Mary. Uh, <coughs> at the MMA, I did, uh, I don't know who else was with me, but I did attend one, uh, one of the seminars on these communication issues, mm -hmm. and they, uh, they pointed out, I think it was one of the communities, might have been Amherst or something, and how, how useful it was, the newsletter. Uh, keep it short, factual. Mm -hmm. uh, they pointed out that you had to do it. Once you start it, that's what my concern is. Mary, you and I talked about this, I think. is Once we start it, we have to be sure we have everyone behind it. Because mm -hmm. they pointed out very clearly that they send a newsletter out every week, could be every month, but whatever your time frame is, they're very careful to stick with that. Even if the newsletter just said there was nothing here this week. <laughs> <laughs> as amazing as it sounds, but people expect it in their email and they expect mm -hmm. it in their, in a build up over time. Uh, I, I just pulled it up because I forgot. Uh, they were uh, bragging about a, uh, uh, a service they hired called MailChimp. They said it was uh, like inexpensive, a few hundred dollars a month to uh, set the template and format that made it relatively easy for mm -hmm. Carolyn to submit her, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, sorry Carolyn, I hate to pick on you all the time. But no, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, and it was well, it was well received. And I don't think, it, it would take some time, but I think it was distributed with the different department heads, we could do it. Uh, it's worth exploring and uh, we could, uh, I'm, I'm enough said. Done. Well, I, I like the idea. I mean, I think consolidation and putting it all out there, it's like just easier. It's hard to find certain things if you don't know where to look and you're not watching our entertaining <laughs> meetings. <laughs> Mark. Yeah, Mark Kelleher, West Howard. Thank you for putting this on the agenda, Mary. Um, yeah, Chatham has uh, the main sheet. Um, uh, at my notes here, I'm getting old, I can't read it. <laughs> uh, but I think it's a great idea to go forward with, and I, you know, a lot of it would depend on Joe and the software package, but uh, from what I understand in talking to some people in Chatham, uh, it's an administrative assistant, about five hours per week. She sits in the department meetings, gathers information, and once it becomes established, the community feeds her more information. So it kind of runs by itself, like uh, I was just thinking tonight, what. Uh, Non-resident taxpayers coming down, seeing what they could do with their kids at the community center of the library. They're saying, hey, I'm getting some good value out of my tax money. Um, the other thing is, as you put it together, the high school has a uh, digital arts program. There's some help right there to help put it together, the format. Mm -hmm. And once you've got that, it's just a matter of feeding the information in. Um, the benefits of this are more civic involvement. Maybe we'll have a full house here. <laughs> some time but people getting in to vote. Uh, I think a big thing is uh, if you don't subscribe to the Chronicle, you don't know what's going on in town. Really, sorry Bill, but uh, you know, get other people involved. He would oh. say that. <laughs> 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 and I think a big issue is the, the non-resident taxpayers uh, who put a lot of revenue into this town are really, they don't really know what's going on. This is a good way to show them what's going on in the town. Um, Here's a perfect example, which I didn't realize. I saw this in the main sheet. Parents' Night Out. Uh, the Montemoy Regional High School class of 2025 is hosting an evening of Montemoy parents to drop off their children in grades one through five while they enjoy time alone this Valentine's season. Games involved. So all this good stuff that schools are doing that we could put out there and show it. Um, last thing is a lot of the non-resident taxpayers live in eastern Massachusetts. They have sewer systems. They could care less about the Cape and its problems with septic. But when they see what we're facing down here with costs and how it's going to affect them, 
you may see them getting involved talking to their representatives back in Boston saying, hey, I don't want my taxes going up on my Cape property. So thanks. Thank you, Mark. This, is, this would be a budget item, uh, yeah. so it's a consensus of the board for Joe to uh, present. That is the consensus, Joe. I'm hoping Joe agrees with that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Joe, we are now on, unless I really missed something, town administrator's report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, just making sure I got all my notes. I have some extra ones for you, you'll get tomorrow. <laughs> um, did you do contracts? We yeah, did. We did. great. Thank you for that. Um, under TA's report, this is not a joke. In fact, I am very thrilled uh, to announce the hiring of the executive assistant to the town administrator and the board of selectmen for the town of Harwich. Uh, the no joke part is her name is Patience. <laughs> and she and I have already talked about, um, wouldn't it be great to bring a little patience into the administration department? Um, she is a, um, she is Patricia, uh, excuse me, Patience, patience Smith Cabrera. Uh, she comes to us from another town on Cape Cod, so we always get extra points for stealing. I mean, working collaboratively. Um, she is um, a, a great personality. Not that that's, you know, uh, a requirement, but when you're having someone come after Alan Powell, um, I can't think of a better person than Patience in that regard. Uh, the team took to her, which is the most important thing uh, for me, and she has agreed to the offer and is expected to start um, on Monday, February 13th. So very thrilled about that appointment um, for Patience Smith Cabrera as the EA for the board and the uh, minister. Michael, through you, by <coughs> that's, that's great news, Jill. I, I think we'd all be remiss if we didn't uh, say something about Alan Powell. Just what an incredible job she she did. She uh, she really pulled our interview committee and function together, and, and the timelines, talking to people, and, and she was. This is hard to believe, but occasionally people call in to, into town hall with a complaint, <laughs> and she handled those perfectly. I think all the time. So she, she want to give all our thanks for her service to the uh, time she was here. Absolutely, and Mr. Chairman, if I could, I was prohibited from starting that discussion, but Ellen didn't say that I couldn't respond to the discussion. So thank you for the opening, Larry. I really appreciate that. Um, yes, we in, in uh, town hall and town government and certainly administration, we're sorry to see our colleague Ellen go. However, we support her in her new endeavors, uh, and Larry, you couldn't have spoken better. Uh, Alan came to us as someone who was just looking to kill some time as a temp. So uh, Megan and I chuckled and said, let's see how good she is, and we gave her the committees to see what she could do. Two weeks later, uh, Megan came in and said, you know that woman who's the temp? And I said, yeah, she seems really nice. And she said, she solved the committee conundrum and I said well that's been going on for six years <laughs> so we decided we would try to offer her a job and mercifully she took it and so for the uh, the year and a half that Ellen worked with us it was fantastic um, we certainly do miss her but we wish her well and again thanks for the opening because if I started it I would have broken my promise to her but I could finish it Don thank you Mr. Chair I'm gonna go a little bit further because uh, I, I was on the receiving end of uh, her working to unravel the, the committees, and she, she was just wonderful. But more than that, I mean, my experience with her is she's just a ray of sunshine. I mean, you're coming into the office, she always had a smile, and that's the way you want the town to be represented. She was always upbeat. It, it was more than just she was competent. So I'm glad we have patience now, but I, <laughs> I was very grateful that we had sunshine before. I can't beat that, but I know I miss <laughs> Ellen. Julie? <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I'm delighted with the news, and I miss Ellen terribly, and she was amazing, and she not only whipped the committees into shape, but she did so with a sense of humor, too, which you really need. <laughs> she yelled at me a lot. Whipped us in shape, <laughs> too. <laughs> I, I would just echo all comments. I'm not going to repeat everything. No. Uh, Ellen had a, a great way about her telling me exactly what to do and what time. So. <laughs> And if I may, Mr. Chairman, she's still with us in the short term. She's been very gracious about uh, helping with the town report. So when I see her this week, I'm going to get, as she would say, what for. 
uh, for this discussion, but I'm willing to take the barbs. <laughs> that concludes my report. Okay, Selectman's report, Julie. Uh, no, I just uh, want to say that I wasn't here last week to say what a great event the MMA was, and I enjoyed uh, spending time with all of you. Uh, Mary. I'm all set. Don? I'm all set. Larry? I'm all set. Motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 We are adjourned.